Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about how to do an oil change on my 2020 BMW M340i xDrive. The process will be similar to other vehicles and let's get started. Similar to other fluid changes, let's talk about how to fill up the oil first before we actually drain them. So here I'm just going to lift up my engine cover so that you can actually see where the oil fill port is going to be. It's just four grommets that's holding the engine cover in place. And I'm just going to place it by the side so that it's not going to interfere with our oil change. At this time, it's also good for you to note that we're also going to need this area right here for us to access our oil filter housing that we're going to need to replace our oil filter. Here, I'm just picking up the camera to show you where the oil fill port is going to be. This is your oil cap. We're just going to do a counterclockwise turn for about a quarter turn or so, and then the oil cap is going to lift right up, just like shown in here. For now, I'm just going to place it back so there is no debris that's falling into our oil. And as I mentioned earlier, this is going to be your oil filter housing. This is the oil filter housing cap that's going to be storing your oil filter. Let's take a second here and talk about the oil filter a little bit more. So this is your oil filter cap. And what I'm holding right now is actually my new oil filter that's made by Manfilter inside this oil filter cap. It's a paper element that's going to filter out any unwanted debris that's inside your oil pan through the oil pickup before it sends to your engine. What I'm also holding is a plastic packet with an o-ring and new crush washer that's going to come with the Manfilter kit. And I'm going to show you in a bit where do they go when we're completing the oil change. Something that's optional but advised to do is to shove several shop rag underneath and wrapping by the oil filter housing to catch any oil dripping off from your old oil filter. This is exactly what I'm trying to do just to make sure how many racks that you're using and you're pulling exactly how many of them because they may become a biohazard if you don't pull them back up when you start the engine. We already know what we're dealing with within the engine bay area, so I'm going to move towards the underneath of the car to show you where the oil drain plug is going to be. I have already raised the vehicle uh, just by the front end area that I've put the car on wood blocks. If you have an SUV, if you have a pickup truck, you may not even have to do so. But we need this ground clearance for us to go underneath the car, access the oil drain plug. So this is what I've done. Let's take a quick second here and talk about the tools we'll need to complete an oil change on a B58 TU engine specifically. I've got three sizes of um, 3 h inch drive ratchets and the longer one as a breaker bar to break loose the drain bolt as well as the oil filter cap. That's 25 newton meter. And next we have a 17 millimeter deep socket for us to access and undo our oil drain plug that's underneath the car. And next up we have two sizes of extension. This is a three inch extension that we're going to be used to attach to our 17 mil. And this is a 10 inch extension to be attached to our, this is a 32 millimeter socket to undo our oil filter cap this is not your normal socket that's going to come with any ratchet sets regularly uh, it's a separate one that i bought for oil filter caps specifically that's gonna go onto this 10 inch extension to undo our oil filter cap and very, very lastly, we have a torque wrench that can do 25 newton meter. I go fancy with this one. It's a digital torque wrench that's relatively accurate. But yeah, that's all that we'll need to complete an oil change. Everything is pretty standard except for the 32 mil socket. And let's start doing the actual work. 
when you crawl underneath the car, you should see this indented circle area. This is your basically front cross member. And right behind it is going to be your oil drain plug access door. Normally, I'll just put two fingers in, but I also have a black undercoating there that's going to gump up. That's why you see I'm struggling right here. But I, when I use two finger, usually it's just going to get the job done. What you want to do is turn it counterclockwise until it releases. And the access door is just going to come right out like that. So now I'm just going to set that access door aside and I'll move the camera towards the hole and you'll be able to see the 17 mil that's resting right under there. That's going to be your oil drain plug. And for the next step, we are just going to get our oil drain pan ready and get your breaker bar and 17 mil to break that oil drain plug off. Just know that nowadays the engine uses thin oil that's like 0W20. So it's really thin in viscosity. So it's pretty normal for them to drain right out like that. You can see I didn't make a big mess right here, but still got my gloves dirty pretty much. But just be mindful. And while we're still underneath the vehicle, I'm holding my oil drain plug. You can see that it comes with a copper washer that's called a crush washer. So basically this is what's sealing your oil drain plug uh, to your oil pan so that it doesn't leak oil. This is sitting up against your oil pan and create a sealing effect. As its name goes, this is a crush washer and when it's torqued, it's going to be crushed down. So that's why you'll have to replace it. And that's also why when you order the man filter, oil filter kit, it's going to come with a new crush washer for you to replace it. And next up, while the oil is still draining and is dripping from the oil pan, we're going to move up to the engine bay area to undo our oil, old oil filter. I'm just undoing a clip that's up top and kind of interfering with my 32 mil to undo our oil filter, which I'm going to show you when we are reinstalling the oil filter. And yeah, so we're just going to undo the oil filter with our 32 millimeter. The oil filter cap itself is torqued down to 25 newton meter, given that it was properly installed the last time it had this oil change. Shouldn't take much force for you to break it loose. But just know that within the oil filter cap, there is an O-ring that's creating the sealing effect. That's also one of the things other than the torque that's holding the oil filter cap down. You can see now it's basically spinning freely. But when you are removing it, you are losing the sealing effect. And there is just going to be oil that's coming out from the oil filter. So just be mindful, and as you can see from my previous clips that I've shoved down several shop racks that's wrapping around the oil filter housing. So yeah, when you're pulling it out, just wiggle it. Let the old oil drip for a little bit. Also at this point, just note that my oil drain plug is still not installed. It's still draining oil because I know that when the oil filter is removed, there is going to be oil that's draining back into the system. So you will want those oil to be drained out as well. But voila, there goes your old oil filter. At this point, let's move to my still work in progress workbench. So you can see this is my old oil filter cap with my old oil filter. There is just going to be an O-ring that's holding the oil filter that we'll have to replace. 
with the new kit. So this is the main filter that I've got. It comes with, of course, the new oil filter, as well as, like I said, the O-ring and the crush washer. So first step, of course, you want to do is to undo or remove your old oil filter. Just give it a light pull and it should come out like that. And just make sure that you are not doing it at an angle because there is a, I believe it's a bypass valve that's holding the oil filter in place. You don't want to wreck that. So that's just going to be discarded. And the next step, we are going to remove the O-ring, the sealing O-ring that's on the oil filter cap. Just look for a groove for you to shove your pick two in. Unfortunately, the viewing angle is not so good. It's also late at night. It doesn't really have a lot of light. But now I'm just grabbing my pick tool. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. Anything will work. If you have a toothpick, probably it will work too. At this point, we're looking for a groove to stick our pick tool in and essentially guide the old O-ring all of its way. Note that we're not reusing the O-ring anyway, so if you want it, you can actually just cut it off with whatever tool that you got. But just to make sure you don't damage the thread on the oil filter cap, or else you may have a hard time. And voila, the old O-ring is here, it's out, and we're just gonna use a new one back into the same groove where it came out from. And as I mentioned earlier, the O-ring is slightly stretchable. You can just stretch it over the top and guide it into the groove. After it's done, we are just going to discard the old one. Whenever you're dealing with any sort of O-ring, it's always a good idea to lubricate them up. Since this is an oil filter cap, I'm using engine oil to lubricate the big O-ring around the cap. Uh, I believe there is also three O-rings at the new engine oil filter. So one up top, uh, two at the bottom, or the other way around, depends on how you view it. Uh, we're going to lubricate with engine oil as well. Next, we're just going to pop it in, give it a light tuck, make sure it's not coming off. While we're still at the workbench area, we're just going to replace the old crush washer with the new one that comes with the kit as well. Basically, you're just gonna pop it into your drain bolt before you put the drain bolt back into the oil pan. This is just how it's gonna be sitting up against the oil pan to create the sealing effect I've been talking about. After we have prepped our new oil filter with our new oil filter cap, it's ready to go back into the engine. Unfortunately, the viewing angle is still not so good, of course. Nothing has changed, we have not removed anything else. But just know that the O-rings are all looped up and we are just gonna pop it back in place. You should feel the O-ring engage within the hole and you just wanna start threading the oil filter cap back in by hand. If you're not able to do it by hand, something is wrong, back it off. I've made that mistake before it's not worth to take your ratchet to force it in but you're not basically not going to be able to do it full on with just your hand because it's an awkward position but just get it hand tight as much as you can and next we're just gonna pop out our torque wrench and torque the oil filter cap to 25 newton meter if you're curious Actually, the oil filter cap says 25 newton meter right on there. And as I mentioned earlier, if you feel any resistance at all, back it out and redo the whole process of reinstalling the oil filter cap again. You should feel a very light, very, very light resistance. That's because the O-ring is guiding itself in through the threads, but it should be very light. And that's also one of the reasons why we have looped up the O-ring so that it can guide itself in through the threads smoother. 
and here I am with my torque wrench with the 32 mil socket just gonna torque it down to 25 newton meter do not over tighten it I don't know what's gonna happen I'm sure it's not something fun is going to happen 25 somewhere around 5% margin error should be okay but try to make it 25 And once that's torqued down, usually I just run my hand over to feel if there is any gap within the oil filter housing and the oil filter cap. As long as there is not a noticeable gap and it's torqued down to 25 newton meter, I'm okay with it. And when you're done torquing it down, remember I've shoved three shop racks underneath or microfiber underneath. And just make sure you pull out all three of them. And like I said earlier as well, just so they don't become a fire hazard after it's reached operating temperature. This engine runs pretty hot, so yeah, just to make sure you pull all of them back up. If you remember earlier in one of the clips, I've removed this harness so that I can better access the oil filter cap. But essentially, to release it, there are just two pins right here that's holding it in place. Pull it towards yourself and you should be able to pull the entire harness out of the place and set it aside to somewhere safe and not pinching the harness. So this is how. And when you're done, just push it back in. And we are done replacing the oil filter. So next we're just going to go back down, torque down the drain bolt, fill the oil back up, and the oil change is complete. And now that we have reinstalled our new oil filter to our oil filter housing, we're going to crawl back underneath the vehicle and plug back in our drain plug. Just make sure you retain your crush washer, a new crush washer, onto your drain plug before you plug it back in. Here, I'm just going to clean up a little bit of the old oil and start threading in the drain plug hand tight. Um, the system takes 25 newton meter of torque. And the next, we're just going to bust out our socket. Make sure it's tight before we do a final torque down 25 newton meter. After we torque it down, I'm just going to use some brick clean to clean up the residual oil a little bit. If there is a leak afterward, we will know where to start. At this time, we're good to go back up to the engine bay and top up the system with oil. I'll leave my drain pan here for the sake of in case if there is a leak, so I'm not making a mess on the floor. This step is optional, but I would advise to leave your drain pan still. Here, I'll just do a quick demonstration of the oil that I'll be using. I'm using Liquid Molly Top Tag 6600, which is 0W20, exactly the spec that BMW calls for the B58 engines, B46, etc. Uh, it's relatively a thin oil to be used, but that's also because nowadays the modern engines have really tight tolerances within internal components. And that's why they're using oil that's so thin so that to make sure the oil is going to flow through all the system parts that needed to be lubricated. You can also see on the right side, I have the Liquid Molly MOS2 NT Friction Modifier. That's an oil additive. Oil additives are something that's completely optional. It's not necessarily needed as well as same goes with oil brands as well. They kind of go as a religion thing. So that's why I'm not going to discuss about oil brand, which oil you should be using. This is just something that I use that's BMW approved. So I'm not going to go over the whole group three, four, five oil base type of thing. If you want to do some research on what kind of oil is the best, and there are just millions and millions of topics uh, out there that you want to look out for, 
but this is something I've been using for several years to have uh, my this current BMW and my previous BMW. I've had good results so far, that's why I just keep using liquid moly for the time being. I also have this kind of oil jug that I will not be using a funnel, just pour everything in and pour into the engine. It's a personal preference thing, I don't like using funnels. Now that we're done discussing about the oil that I'm going to be using, just going to fast forward me pouring oil back into the engine. I'm using pure oil here. And the next one you're going to see is way darker because of the oil additive. Just so you know that I'm doing this voiceover because I don't want you to think that I'm using old oil and putting it back to the engine. It's still fresh oil and just with the oil additive that's way darker in color. Before we call the job complete, we're going to reset our service reminder for engine oil as well. Quickly press start stop three times. The car is going to enter diagnostic mode with all the light flashing at you. And it's going to say diagnostic mode active. And from here, we're going to press on our BC button and hold it down for the longest time. I want to say 15 seconds, maybe 10, maybe 20 seconds. I don't know. It felt like a really long time. You are just going to hold it down and you're going to see your trip meter is reset. It's not actually resetting, don't worry about it. But at this step, you're still holding it down on the BC button. And then you see reset back to how it was before. Still hold it down. Now you see the service menu. You can let go of the BC button and tap on it once. It's going to switch and cycle to the next one, which is engine oil, what we want it. Reset possible and you're going to tap on bc button one more time and hold it down as well and it's going to ask you respect reset question mark i'm going to take like another 10 seconds or so there you go and let go of the bc button press on it one more time i know it's annoying again it's also a 10 second kind of process and finally it will be reset but you can do it way easier with, say, like a diagnostic tool or like Beamer Link, for example. One tap of a button, but generally speaking, this is how it's done. Before you start up the car, make sure you do a mental note. Have you actually fill up the oil? Have you replaced your oil filter? If you're done, go to start the vehicle. After we do that, just see if there is any engine light. I don't have any. And I also pop back the hood to make sure there is no and not any abnormal noises. And then we're gonna crawl underneath the vehicle and check for leaks. And lastly, you'll crawl back underneath the car for the last time for this oil change. Uh, check for leaks if there is nothing coming out from the drain bolt, if there is none coming out from elsewhere, you're good to replace your oil access cover. It's going to be the exact same procedure of removing it, but in reverse, of course and you're going to line back up the tabs and the grooves and turn it clockwise to clock it back in and after you are done clocking it back in you're going to give it a light tug to make sure it's not going to come off and we can call this oil change job complete and successful if you're at this point still watching the video, I really appreciate that you're staying in here with me as well as spending time to hang out uh, and learn how to do an oil change on your vehicle. The process will be very, very similar to other makes and models, whatever car that you own, as long as it's not an EV. Pulling off the drain plug, make sure that you have access to your fill port, uh, replace your oil filter, and just reverse all the procedure and that's all for the job of an oil change thank you very much for watching if you like the video please give it a thumbs up as well as consider subscribing to my channel because i have a lot more plans for my g20 bmw m340 ix drive thank you very much for the last time and i'll catch you in the next one cheers